We've talked about Zoro, we've talked about Luffy, but today we are talking about my favorite straw hat, King Simp himself, Sanji. Sanji's role in the story has always been really interesting to me. With Luffy and Zoro, their job is basically to be strong. Luffy being the captain, who wants to be the king of the pirates, and Zoro being the first mate, who wants to become the strongest swordsman. These two need to be strong to reach their goals. But Sanji is the only member of the big three whose dream has nothing to do with being strong. His official role is the chef of the Straw Hats, he wants to find the all blue, and he just happens to be a badass on top of that. To me, he's also one of the funniest characters in the show. His two major running jokes are being in a constant dick measuring contest with Zoro, and um, how do I say this? Uh, well, Sanji is definitely the kind of guy who would sign up for every e-girls only fans, if you know what I mean. Unlike Luffy and Zoro, Sanji doesn't have too many over-the-top moments like when nothing happened or when Luffy punched a celestial dragon. Instead, Sanji tends to have a lot of little but awesome things scattered across the story. Today's video is sponsored by Bleach Immortal Soul, which is great timing because it looks like the Bleach anime is actually going to be coming back. Who would have thought? Not me. Bleach Immortal Soul is an all new officially licensed RPG mobile game featuring voice acting from the original anime. <laughs> With epic Bankai releases and full screen effects, get ready to dive back into the world of Bleach with action packed battles and all the characters you know and love. Try and collect them all and level up your favorite characters. I'm personally gonna need to get my boy Toshiro Hitsugaya, reign over the frosted heavens, my dude, and my girl Rongiku. Speaking of best girls, you know I'm gonna have to have the absolute waifu Yororichi in my lineup. There are a bunch of different modes to choose from, the main story, to PvP, to the battle arena. There is a ton of fun to be had in this strategic character based RPG. Your team composition, the order of attack, and the accuracy of landing QTE combos will greatly affect your chances of victory as you progress through the game. But there is still a hands-free option, auto attack, for more casual gamers. This game is available for free on both iOS and Android, download it and return to the Soul Society today. Be sure to redeem the code in the description below for a free kickoff prize. Not only would you be getting a fun, free game, but you would be supporting my channel in the process, and I really do appreciate it. It's gamer time, boys, and without any more delay, let's jump back into the video. Early One Piece was pretty good for Sanji, but one of my favorite arcs in the series has some of my favorite Sanji moments in it. In the Baratie arc, we have two awesome moments with Sanji, and both of them give us a totally different look at his character. First, let's talk about Sanji and Gein. A guy walks into the Baratie and is on death's door. He's completely starving, and when he barges in and demands food from the restaurant, he gets thrown out by the fighting cooks. Then, even though Gein was just kicked out, Sanji brings him some food and sits with him while he eats, explaining that he will never let someone starve if he can help them. I really love this moment because it just shows what a genuinely good guy Sanji is. Like, yeah, we get a ton of moments where he's literally willing to risk his life to try and get some, but I don't exactly think he was trying to sleep with Gein here. Instead, he just saw a dude who needed help and immediately acted on it. It kind of is rare to see Sanji help a man, but regardless of who it was, we see Sanji go out of his way to help starving people several times in the series. Hell, even when Big Mom was having hunger issues, Sanji insists on making her a perfect cake instead of a poisoned one because he can't resist feeding someone who is hungry. So if the Gein moment showed us what a nice guy he is, the next moment shows us what a Chad he is. We get one of our first looks at full body as he is on a date in the Baratier, and apparently he called ahead so he could have them serve a specific wine. His plan was to impress his date by guessing the wine and making a big show of it. Sanji walks up and pours his drink, full body raises his hand, and calls to the restaurant explaining how the wine is a little spicy and a little sour. He knows just where it's from because he requested it in advance. He makes his guess, then Sanji grabs his hand, forces a spoon in it, and closes it, and says nope. Not even close. And your soup is getting cold. You should eat that while it's hot. Completely embarrassing full body. He freaks out and Sanji just looks at his date and says, How about it? Do you want to ditch this guy and come have wine with me instead? Like what an absolute mad lad. Just imagine you go out of your way to look cool on a date, maybe even pay a little extra. And then the chef comes up, tells you to shut up and eat, and then asks your girlfriend if she's down to fuck. Like to me, this is when Sanji is at his best. He isn't throwing himself at women, but instead he is calm, cool, and a badass Chad that you just can't help but respect, which is totally different from how he flirts now. 
All right, while we are in the East Blue, we have to talk about the most underrated moment in all of the Arlong Park. How many times have you heard about Luffy giving Nami his hat, or beating Arlong, or even Zoro fighting while injured? No one talks about Sanji being a beast here. We all know how this arc went. Nami gets betrayed, asks for help, and our boys march into Arlong Park to take down the Fishmen. Luffy fights Arlong, Zoro fights Hachi, and even Usopp fights Chu. Sanji, on the other hand, fights Kurobi. We all talk about Zoro being indestructible, but Sanji gets decimated in this fight. Sanji dives into the water knowing he will be at a disadvantage to try and save Luffy. Kurobi explains that Sanji's speed and strength is cut in half underwater, while his are multiplied. And that's on top of Fishman being 10 times stronger than humans already. Kurobi hooks Sanji on a rope and keeps pulling him in to beat him down. Sanji finally gets away, but he's already at his limit. He needs to breathe. He starts swimming up, but Kurobi stops him. He grabs Sanji and then proceeds to dive insanely deep and insanely fast before coming to a full stop, basically crushing Sanji's organs from the change in pressure. You even see his stomach compress and him spit out blood. But Sanji, actually using his head in a fight, blows air into the fishman's gills to essentially make the fishman suffocate underwater. Then the second they get out of the water, Sanji just dominates this dude with kicks. It's a pretty sweet fight and no one ever seems to talk about it. Next up, let's talk about Sanji the Simp. This man's number one priority is making sure women are safe. And we actually have two moments I could talk about here quickly. First was the one on Punk Hazard. The lab is going down Everyone needs to get the hell out of there. Sashigi is on the floor crying and unable to speak, begging in her mind that Smoker will come save her. We see one tear hit the floor as Virgo aims his hand to finish her off. And Sanji, the absolute Chad lad, bursts in, launching himself through the air because he apparently heard her teardrop and knocks down Virgo in a single kick. Keep in mind, this is the dude we just saw beat the hell out of Smoker with very little effort. Honestly, this whole arc is just a straw hat showing that there are beasts by saving Toshigi. First we had Zoro against Monet, and now this? Actually, I think Zoro happens after this moment, if I remember correctly. I don't know. Also, let me remind you that they had zero obligation to save Toshigi because she's a marine. Anyways, his other lady moment is a little bit more of a gag. Nami is up on Enel's ship and is scared for her life. Sanji looks up in the sky and can see Nami from miles away. He does this with his Melorin Detect, and I still don't know how this works, honestly. But I can only assume it's some kind of advanced observation hockey, and this man is doing God's work with using his superpower to spot a woman. And then that leads to his fight with Anel. Usopp is about to be killed by a bolt of lightning, and Sanji kicks him out of the way taking a full-on Thor blast to the face at point blank. But the awesome part is after he kicks Usopp, he just stands there, confident and smiling, totally resolved and happy to give his life for his crew. Of course, he lives and is still standing after that and says one of the coolest lines in the freaking show. Listen, I get it. Zoro says nothing happened. It's sweet as hell, it's amazing, and shows how cool Zoro is. But Sanji basically does the same thing here and no one talks about it. Remember, Sanji is already super wounded. He's covered in bandages, saves Usopp, then he takes a massive blast of lightning that chars his entire body. And what does he say when Anel looks at him? Not just nothing happens, but he actually thanks him, takes a puff of his cigarette and says, thanks, I needed a light. And then follows up by saying that Anel needs to get ready to cry. And Sanji has this totally calm and happy smile on his face the whole time. Like, I don't know, I'm not trying to take away anything from the nothing happened scene. But to me, this is a close one and it's completely forgotten and it just blows my mind. This next point is going to be a pretty big spoiler, so heads up if you are behind. But in the Alabasta saga, Sanji impersonated a Baroque Works agent and calls himself Mr. Prince when talking to Crocodile and totally saves the crew. And this is definitely a flex on Sanji's part, but is even more a flex on Oda's part, making this a totally awesome foreshadowing scene where like 15 years later, he ended up actually being a prince. And while everyone seems to love this new backstory overall, I never really see people talking about his conversation with Judge. Judge abandoned, imprisoned, and cast away Sanji. And when he threw him out, he asked Sanji to never admit to being Judge's son because that would be a true embarrassment for him. And despite that, Sanji still came to save them. So Judge asked why he would do that. Sanji tells him he had to help because his father, his real father, would be sad if he acted resentful for his tragic past. Sanji says he doesn't want to live a life where he'd be too ashamed to face his father. Sanji grabs Judge by the collar, 
pulls him down to his knees and says Vinsmoke Sanji went out to sea 13 years ago and died just like you wanted and tells Judge to admit that he is no longer Sanji's father and to never show himself to the Straw Hats again basically reversing the speech Judge gave 13 years ago in a really beautiful way. And the final point might not be canon, but I freaking love it. Sanji has a one-shot story where he goes to Totsuki Academy from Food Wars, and come on, how sweet is that? I definitely recommend giving it a read. Honestly, I should really give it a reread. It's been too long. Overall, I think everyone knows that Sanji is my favorite straw hat, and this list, I think, gives you a good set of reasons why. Sure, Zoro might cut mountains in half, and Luffy is Luffy. I love both of them to death. They are amazing characters, but Sanji's moments tend to be more heartfelt. He has those badass feats, don't get me wrong, but he is also probably the most tragic and kind-hearted of all the Straw Hats. He isn't a pathetic simp, he's a sympathetic simp, and I really love that about him. Next time, we're going to be talking about Usopp, so let me know your favorite Usopp underrated moments as well. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like, subscribe for more anime content, and if you want to support the channel even more and help me go full-time content creator, you can check out my Patreon link down below. I want to give a huge thanks to my $1 tier, who are on screen right now. I want to give a thank you to my $2 tier, Siren, Todoroki is a better character than Onizuka, No, Raphael, Codex, I want to give a thank you to my $5 tier, Mick Manga, Nothing But A Fan, King Osloth, Maggie, Joel Godinez, Michelle Moria, Kaido Might Be A Dragon, Jessica. I want to give a extra big thank you to my $10 tier, Johnny Boy Draws, I Cry During Sex, RTL Faith, Solon, John Bruno, Cricket XP, Jay Kasumi, Shelly, Kalista, Kaiser Runar, Terra Shift, Gamer, Your Boy Shinji, Nicholas Ramirez, Soul Slayer, Jakeman, Greg, Odin, Love Phenomenon, and Ginkgo Taku. And finally, a huge thank you to the absolute, absolute mad lads, a $25 tier, Steelers, Rusty Lee, Tyson Quirino, Mori, aka Alpha Dio, the fifth Yonko, and finally, some guy, 9393. Thank you so much, everybody, and just like that, I will see you guys all in the next one. Shinpaku.